Hello. Good evening to all of you. Now we are going to see the basics of surface tension. First of all, let us understand these terms. Let us try to understand what is tension. Now, if there is a block, let's say, and it is at rest under the influence of several forces. So, the forces say could be like this or the forces could be outward like this. In both cases, the body is at rest. But here we say it is under compression. The body is under compression. The force is inward onto the body. Here we say the body is under tension because the forces are outwards. Now, if you take a liquid or any substance for that matter, a liquid molecule is attracted by other liquid molecules nearby. So, if you see the force on a particular liquid molecule, it is outward. Hence, the molecule is under tension. That is why the word tension. We didn't use the word surface compression. We said surface tension. That's the reason. Now, this force you must understand uh, is electromagnetic in nature. It is electromagnetic in nature. There are protons and electrons. So, they produce electric fields and moving charges produce magnetic fields. So, the forces are electromagnetic, electric, uh, electrostatic as well as magnetic. So, electromagnetic. Now, the question is, will a molecule very far away be able to attract this? Obviously not. So, there is a certain range. In fact, a molecule which is say around 10-15 diameters away, molecular diameters away, will be able to exert a force on this. Similarly, by Newton's third law, uh, this will also exert a force on the molecules nearby. So this is known as the molecular range. The molecular range is about 10 to 15 diameters. That means the force can be applied 10 to 15 diameters away. Beyond that, there is some force, but it is negligible. So we consider 10 to 15 diameters as the molecular range. Now, with a molecule at the center, we can draw a sphere equal to the having radius equal to the molecular range. Every molecule within the sphere will exert a force on this molecule, on the central molecule. And the central molecule also will exert a force on the other molecules within the sphere by Newton's third law. So, this sphere is called as the sphere of influence. Sphere of influence. Now you see what happens. If a molecule is well within an inside a liquid, it will be in equilibrium. But supposing this is a surface and you have a molecule which is somewhere here. If I draw the sphere of influence, it will be something like this. Here there are no liquid molecules. The air molecules do not exert that much force, very negligible force. So, this is absent. So, if you add up all these forces, we will come to that, there will be a net downward force. It will not be in equilibrium. A molecule well within the liquid will be in equilibrium. But a molecule near the surface will not be in equilibrium. So, that brings us to the definition of surface. Is surface just the first layer of molecules? The answer is no. It is 10 to 15 molecular layers. 
is called as the surface. That is, if this is the free surface, if I draw, if I if I take a thickness, if I take a thickness equal to the molecular range, if I consider a molecule here, the sphere of influence is going to be like this. Sorry, the sphere of influence will be like this. But if I consider a molecule here, the sphere of influence will be like this. This is absent. So, when we say surface, it is not just the top layer of molecule, but 10-15 layers of molecules constitutes a surface. Now, let us consider this particular molecule which is within the surface. Now, I can draw forces here of attraction. I have drawn forces of attraction here. And uh, as I said, now this is three dimensional. Please imagine it. It is three dimensional. Now we are going to take two views we are going to take. You will agree that because of the spherical symmetry, there will be no net horizontal force. The net force of all these will be a downward force. So, as you are taking a side view, the net force is going to be, you take a side view, you take a side view as we are taking right now, the net force is downwards. There is no net horizontal force. But we are going to do one thing. Although the net horizontal force is zero, we are still going to show them how in a top view. We take a top view from here, all the horizontal forces will be can be shown like this. All these are of course add up to zero. These are the various horizontal forces adding up to zero. So now Supposing I draw a line, an imaginary line. Now what I can do is, I can find the resultant of all the forces on one side of the line and also on the other side of the line. So, I will have basically a force F like that and a force F like that. Both will cancel. So this clearly shows how that molecule is under tension F and F yes now I, the nearby molecules will also experience the force F F this is the force of surface tension F F now as you can see if you ask how much is the total force on one side well it depends on the length of the line the longer the line more is going to be the force so therefore, the force of surface tension is not given in Newton, but it is given as force per unit length. That is why surface tension, the unit of surface tension is Newton per meter. Per unit length, how much is the force? That is how it is specified. Now, let us come to this downward force. An interesting thing is happening. This downward force is pulling this molecule down. Similarly, any if all the molecules within this surface are experiencing a downward force. And they are all coming down. Now, if they come down, there will be vacancy created. They will push other molecules below. And they will exert a force on them. They will collide with them. And so, those molecules will start rising up. So, the surface of a liquid which seems so calm and serene, is not so serene. It is highly turbulent. Molecules are going down and from molecules from the bottom are coming up. Now see a very interesting thing. Suppose I throw this pen up. If I throw this pen up, gravitational pull is downward. I have given it some kinetic energy. That kinetic energy disappears and becomes gravitational potential energy. Much the same thing is happening at the liquid surface here. 
If you state the liquid surface here, a molecule which is moving up with the velocity v, let's say, and with the downward force on it, yes, its kinetic energy will get converted into potential energy. Now, please don't mistake me, this potential energy is not gravitational potential energy because gravitational forces are very negligible. Gravitational forces are, have take great magnitudes only for celestial bodies, earth, sun, moon, etc. For tiny bodies, gravitational force is negligible. So, the force here is electromagnetic and the potential energy is also electromagnetic. So, as this molecule moves up, there is a gain in the potential energy. So, the surface has got excess electromagnetic potential energy. This excess electromagnetic potential energy is called as the surface energy. That is the surface energy. So, take for example, so if you have to create a surface, you have to spread something, say you have to create a surface, more the surface area, more will be the surface energy. So, you will have to do work in creating a surface. For instance, if you are painting this room, let's say, the paint drop is, has got very little area, surface area. But that same paint drop, if it is, say, uh, painted over a large area with a brush, you have created a lot of area. That creating of that area, you have also created a lot of surface energy. Where did all that come from? From your muscular energy. So that is by the principle of energy conservation. Any energy must, if the energy is created somewhere, it must be given up somewhere. So the there is excess. So to create a surface, you need to do work. You need to expend energy, and that is stored as surface energy. Okay, we will see more about surface tension later. That's all for now. Thank you.